Research has shown that a high school aged kid who has had no formal math training whatsoever, but is cognitively ready for the information can learn a K through 12 math curriculum in eight weeks. Hey guys, I am Brittany, and if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe so I can send you more good content. Of course, hit the bell to be notified when it comes out. You know what? The research I just shared with you blew my mind the first time I heard it, mainly because we cry with our kids every day over math. 12 years of crying. I have not let go of traditional math. Even though we use unschooling in a lot of ways, we still do math. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying and assume that we no longer do math. But I shared that research with you to put things in perspective because it certainly did for me. How inspiring is that when we start to study the human brain and realize the way that it works whenever a kid is interested in something and cognitively ready for something. That is really the key. In fact, research also shows that it only takes 30 hours to teach a child to read if they're cognitively ready. Think about that for a minute. We put kids in preschool at two and they're kind of like monkeys, got flashcards, hold them up. And it takes like six weeks to teach them what an A is. But if you wait till your kid's like six or seven years old, it takes about a minute to teach them what an A is. I don't really know why we feel like we have to struggle with everything, but we should probably pay attention to the way God created our brain and listen to our kids and what they're interested in because it's really helpful. What it really boils down to is a lot of wasted time. It's time that we could have spent together exploring nature, cultivating our relationship with them, having fun through imaginative play. So that's just some food for thought. So today I am gonna share curriculum options with you. I'm gonna share teaching styles of math with you and give you lots to think about and decide what's best for you and your child. But the most important thing that I want you to take away from this is that your relationship with your kid is so much more important than that day's math lesson. Math can be a cause of so much stress for us as homeschool moms, and it is so important to have perspective in the scheme of things. So anytime you are having a bad day, just remind yourself, they could learn this in eight weeks later. I'm not gonna cry about it. I am not gonna yell at them about it. It isn't worth it. Okay, so in case you don't already know this, there are basically two different methods of teaching mathematics. There is spiral and there is mastery. If you do a Charlotte Mason style homeschool, you will start to hear about mastery mathematics and how that differs from a traditional model. So spiral, like the name implies, kind of circles back around to the same thing often, but it's also covering a lot of other topics at the same time. So on one math sheet, the child might be learning addition and then how to tell time and then subtraction and then maybe measurement and it's just all sort of jumbled together and there are also a lot of very abstract math problems like lots of worksheets lots of just numbers like this plus this equals and just a whole page of that right mastery on the other hand as the name implies focuses on mastering one concept in math before you move on to the next one. And it's really like building blocks. So on a math page that's mastery based, you're not gonna see a ton of different concepts altogether unless it's a review sheet, but you're going to see one thing that's taught many different ways. And it's kind of like they're finding the way into the child's brain. Like how is it best for them to grasp this? Which I really love. Another thing that you'll see with mastery are a lot of word problems because math is very abstract, especially for small children. So whenever you can take that and turn it into concrete terms and you can build a story in their mind where they can really work it out like, oh, if this happened and I had this number of something and then my brother wanted this number from me and I gave it to him, it all of a sudden makes sense so much more than 13 minus seven just written out in numerical form. When my oldest was in kindergarten, we started out using a Becca as our homeschool curriculum. And I started to notice he was getting very frustrated with his math lessons. He was 
really smart. He was getting the concepts, but he would get to the point where you could just see the stress all over his little face. And he would be so close to tears nearly every single day with his lessons. And what was really bizarre about it is he would tell people when they asked him, what's your favorite subject in school? He would always say math. And I'm like, you're like so, so stressed out over math. What on earth are you talking about? Right? So a friend happened to introduce me to the Charlotte Mason method shortly after, and I started hearing about the mastery approach. And I thought, you know what? I think he might be frustrated moving from one concept to the other and spiraling around so much that might not make sense in his little brain. And every kid learns differently. You kind of just have to decide what's best for each child. So I asked him, is this frustrating to you that they're jumping from addition to time and things like that? And he said, yes. He knew, he didn't know how to communicate that to me or that there was another option, but he immediately knew that that was frustrating. So we decided to switch over to a mastery-based approach. So here are some examples of what a spiral curriculum is. A Becca, Bob Jones, and Saxon are all spiral curriculums. They're all a little bit different from each other, but very close to a traditional model of what a public school math curriculum would teach. Now here are a few curriculums that are mastery based. Math Mammoth, Singapore, and Math UC are all mastery curriculums. They are very different from one another, but they believe in a mastery based approach to learning math. So we decided to make the switch to Singapore mathematics whenever I realized that this spiral traditional way was really not working for my son. And we stuck with Singapore with all of my kids through those younger grades and we really loved it. If you're not familiar, Singapore, the country, was rated so high for their testing with mathematics that other countries begin to ask them, can we see your curriculum? Can we use it? Can we duplicate it and use it in our schools? So they provided a US edition and other editions of their curriculum. So people, homeschoolers especially, and even private schools could use it. So I really liked what I was seeing about that curriculum and we decided to jump in and try it. They have a common core edition, but since that was not important to me, we just got the regular edition and we were extremely happy with it. So we decided to switch to teaching textbooks once the kids got to a third grade level because that's where teaching textbooks start. That is an online curriculum and it is not very teacher intensive at all. They get to sit down with the computer and pretty much can do it all themselves. They need help occasionally, but it takes a huge load off of my shoulders. Now, I loved Singapore. I really would have continued with it all the way through had I only had one child, but I knew with four kids all eventually needing me to homeschool them simultaneously, I was going to have to outsource something and math was what I decided to outsource. I really enjoy reading to my kids and doing language arts with them. That's really my passion is literature. So I was like, you know what? Relationships over curriculum. We're going to outsource math. And I was just really at that point looking for something to take the load off my shoulders and make it fun for them at the same time. And teaching textbooks has definitely delivered. I highly recommend it. So one thing that I recommend to moms all the time when they have students in the early grades of mathematics is manipulatives. No matter what curriculum you're using, buy some manipulatives for your house to help them work through each problem with something that they can actually feel and hold in their hands. Some of the things that we've really loved are counting blocks. They're just foam, got them at the dollar store. And then another thing I bought that we've used and it's been invaluable are counting rods. I got this concept from Matthew C. We almost went with the curriculum, but didn't. But I highly recommend you watching YouTube videos about the curriculum because the way that they teach with their blocks is really different and awesome. And I love it. So I actually decided to buy blocks that I could use in a similar way to Matthew C that they can build on top of each other. And you would be surprised how many math concepts they teach using these counting rods. So for example, I just bought these fairly inexpensively, I think on eBay, and I wrote on there the value of each one, but then you quickly learn the colors and know that a green is always gonna be six. So if you build a six on top of a 10 like this, and then you take the fours 
and you build up the fours beside it, you can see how many fours go into 16. So you're even teaching multiplication and division using these counting rods. Another thing that you can do, and you'll see on Matthew C demonstration videos, is you can actually draw out on a sheet of paper a tens house, a hundreds house, a thousands house. And that has been something that's very, very helpful for my kids in understanding place value. I think when it comes down to it, you guys, it's really important for your kids to have a math curriculum that they don't hate. Honestly, they all get the job done in one way or another. I did Saxon when I was in high school and loved it. My sister did it and hated it. You've kind of just got to figure out what kind of personality does my kid have? Are they analytical or are they more of a right brainer? You know, and find something that they don't just despise. And yes, math is a discipline. Sometimes we really have to view it like this is something that we're putting in the work to reap rewards later on in life and it's gonna teach them character in the process. And maybe it's not always gonna be super fun, but let's make it as fun as we possibly can. Which brings me to my last tip. I like to teach math through games, real life and literature as much as I possibly can. So when it comes to games, my mom always said she taught us to count by fives using dominoes and she is totally right. It's awesome for skip counting. Another thing that we love to do is card games for math. These are so easy to find on the internet. You can find even things at the dollar store that are math games and it makes it so much more fun. Another one of our favorites is the allowance game. <laughs> Teaching your kids how to count money by using games is the absolute best way. They learn so much faster. And of course, for teaching math in real life, there's no better place than the kitchen. Get your kids in there and teach them to measure out the ingredients to make some homemade cookies. And trust me, they're going to be way more interested when they know chocolate chip cookies are at the end of it. <laughs> Teaching math through literature can be a little bit more challenging, but I love these books that my friend recommended to me called Circumference. A Math Adventure by Cindy Neuschwander and Wayne Gian. Circumference and the Round Table, and then we have Circumference and the Great Night at England. So you can see these are going to teach through stories, through good rich stories, the foundational concepts of geometry. And sometimes stories like this can really help your kid who's struggling with remembering what is the difference between a diameter and a radius, and it'll just give them a mnemonic uh, memory device or like a memory peg in their brain through a story. We also love using math songs for multiplication tables and things like that. Anytime you can use a song, do it. That is what I have to share with you today about math. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below. Do your kids love math, hate it? Has it been the source of tears for you? And what have you done to make it better and more beautiful? Thanks guys, see you later.